everybody, welcome back to Agrarian Skies 2 as we continue working on Applied Energistics. Um, didn't do a whole lot off camera because I was just too excited to get, uh, get going. I did set up a bunch of um, Nether, Fluix, and Certus Quartz seeds to, um, to work in the Crystal Growth Chamber that we built last time. Uh, that's happily humming away. I'm sure I'll need those later. I fed some soul sand through the uh, sifter assembly and got some uh, some nether quartz out of it and combined with the uh, 42 stacks of certus quartz should be okay on there. Um, the other thing that we're gonna need this time I set up some quartz dust to smelt into silicon and that is moving right along. So, this time, I want to get to the basic uh, network. So basically getting started, which means we need an ME drive, a 1K storage cell, and an ME terminal. So let's start with the storage cell, just because, uh, yeah, that's going to be important. So ME 1K, oh, that's not right. 1K ME, yeah, there we go. 1K ME storage cell. So outside is just you know, quartz glass, iron, redstone, that's fine. This guy needs Certus Quartz Redstone and this Logic Processor. We're going to need several of these uh, today. The Logic Processor comes from the Inscriber. We're going to need a printed Logic Circuit, a printed Silicon, some Redstone. Printed Silicon is an Inscriber Silicon Press with the Silicon. Logic Press with Gold and then you press them together with redstone to get the logic processor. So we need to make sure we've got a silicon press and a logic press. We have the engineering press and the calculation press. So we do not have what we need yet. To get the logic press, we dump copper into the casting table. And to get the silicon press, we dump nickel into the casting table. So let's go get those real quick. We need a copper ingot and a nickel ingot. And I'm not sure if these will alloy, so I'm not going to put them in at the same time. And while that's working, Let's find the inscriber, because we're going to need him too. There we go. So one thing that I would also like to build today, something to uh, let us get power from the rest of the network, and it's a energy acceptor. Need a flux crystal, iron, and quartz. So let's get that going. Get a flux crystal, quartz glass, and some iron. Oh good, this is ready. There's our logic press. And now we have an energy acceptor. And in just a second we'll have our silicon press. There we go. So there's our presses. Silicon press, engineering press, calculation press, logic press. And if I remember correctly, basically the logic press, well, let's start the silicon press, goes with silicon. It would help if I open the right chest. The logic press, Presses gold. 
one of them presses um, quartz, and one of them presses diamond. This is really just for me to uh, be able to remember when I'm looking at when I'm uh, working through it. So let's look at the processors. We have a calculation processor and an engineering processor. The engineering processor is the engineering press with diamond. The calculation processor is the calculation press with quartz. Uh, was that pure quartz? Yes, it has to be pure quartz. So you will get one of those instead. There we go. That way it's very easy for uh, for me to remember which ones go where. Okay, so we've got this energy acceptor now. I am going to take a quick break and run um, cable over here, and I will be right back. Okay, We're back there. Got that plugged up. I am not entirely sure that it's working because this guy still says he contains zero AE. Um, so that could be it could be that I'm not hooking something up correct. It could be that I I'm not entirely sure. Um, I I may be missing something. Anyway, we will see if we can press something. So let's press on. Um, and let's do six of these. So oh, it's not letting me stack them. Okay, I can stack them in the output, it looks like, but not in the input. That might be where those uh, upgrade cards come in. All right, so we've got six of those. And now, Let's create some uh, of the base processors. Let's do six of those as well. And go ahead and get the redstone. Six of those too. Okay. It would be helpful to pick up the press. Got the logic press and Let's make ourselves some of the processor assemblies. Or they used to be called processor assemblies. Now they're called printed logic circuits. And I'm going to make them several of these. I know I'm going to need uh, one for the storage cell, another one for the drive. Um, actually, the drive might take a different processor. Maybe I got one too many um, piece of gold, but I only need six of these. So next, we need to put this and this with that. And I'm really going to need to find the upgrade cards. Let's see, advanced card, basic card, capacity card, crafting card, yeah, I'm not entirely sure which one of these 
if these are even the ones that I need. But um, somehow I've got to be able to add stacks to these things. Otherwise, this is going to get tedious. But anyway, I'm going to make these six, and I'll be back. And it does turn out to be useful. You can shift-click into this. So that's something, at least. All right, we've got our processors. So let's look at that 1K storage again. Sort of quartz, redstone, more redstone, glass, and iron. Did it have to be quartz glass? Let's look. Yes, it must be quartz glass. Worth knowing that. storage component. Then we can do this. And one thing I haven't shown before, if you shift click the question mark, it'll automatically fill from your inventory, which is cool. Okay. Oh, just earn the achievement better than chests. Do you get to see achievements in the quest book? Doesn't show up anywhere. Oh well. Applied engineering. Still on basic network. We got this. We got the cable. Now we need a ME drive and an ME terminal. So how do we do it? The ME drive. Uh, we're using the advanced pro or the uh, oh, what's it called? The engineering processor now which is the same process with the silicon, but now we need a diamond with an engineering press. We need two of those, so let me go get them. We'll get the engineering press, two more silicon, and the silicon press. So shift click is a little better than dragging it up manually. Does that work? Doing it in reverse? It appears to work. I should put a crafting table over there at some point. All right, the drive, uh, two cables, and iron. And now we have an ME drive. Last thing we need is an ME terminal, which is simply a logic processor, uh, an annihilation core, a formation core, and an illuminated panel. The illuminated panel, what's the difference? Okay. Iron glowstone, redstone, quartz glass.
and now we have three illuminated panels. If I remember correctly, these are pretty cool. You can use them as light sources um, when you have your ME network. So that's kind of neat. Alright, next up we have the panels. Now we need a formation core and an annihilation core. The formation core is Certus Quartz, Fluix Dust, and a logic processor. The other one is Nether Quartz, Fluix Dust, and a processor. So, let's see. Nether Quartz, Certus Quartz, I don't have any Fluix Dust. I will in a minute. formation core. Got our annihilation core. And then simply those the illuminated panel and processor. And I'm going to go ahead and make two of these just uh, because. And now we're complete. We get an 1k storage cell as a reward, and I'm going to pick a full heart just because um, I'm still worried about only having three lives. So there we go. Now we have four. Let's build the network. So I'm going to stow some of this stuff just uh, to get it out of the way. I'll move this later, but uh, for right now I'm just trying to get it working. Cool. We'll load that up, and then should be able to. Uh, dump a bunch of cobble in there and see it show up. So if you haven't used Applied Energistics before, there's a really cool um, mod spotlight from Direwolf20 that uh, will help. In fact, for a lot of mods, if you haven't used them before, uh, check out Direwolf20's mod spotlights. They're really useful. But what it's basically doing is giving you digital storage. So you can store any sorts of things in these storage cells and retrieve them at these terminals. There are also special terminals for crafting um, and there's even an auto crafting uh, mechanism as well. So we have two storage cells in here that will hold 63 types each or 126 types of things and those 46 cobble are consuming 14 bytes of 1024. If you want more types of things, you can obviously add more storage cells and or larger storage cells to um, to store more items of a certain type. Or you want more types, you add storage cells. So I'm going to bring this over here just to uh, to show you kind of how cool it is. So let's get uh, several stacks. And I'm going to go ahead and just plug those in. So you can see 494 uh, cobble available, still only using one type. So even if you store more than, a, more than a stack, you're just using one type, it'll just keep growing in terms of number of bytes used. This storage cell will fill up when it has 1024 bytes used, or it has 63 types of things in it. So let's add a few more types of things. You can see now there are five types and 103 bytes used. So pretty cool way of uh, storing things. And um, yeah, it's neat. 
I'm not going to stick the cobble in there yet. My major major thing I wanted to deal with um, with this guy was all of the stuff in the drawers upstairs because uh, I don't know, it just gets frustrating. There's also several other cool um, storage things that um, you can do with it. You can, for example, with um, to find it. Yeah, there. So there's the the inter the terminals. There's also a crafting terminal, which is the terminal, a crafting table, and a calculation processor. Let's do that real quick. Um, so we just need to use the calculation press on a pure Certus Quartz crystal. And of course we'll need another silicon as well. I need redstone. I knew something wasn't right. That was way too easy. Alright, now let's get the... Um, let's see, I've got planks upstairs. I don't have any on me. This is why I wanted another terminal. And now we have a crafting terminal, which basically combines the access terminal with the ability to craft directly in it. So basically anything from your ME system is right there, ready for you, just like another inventory on the crafting terminal. Uh, that was a shift right click with the crescent hammer to uh, to pick up the item. So I tend to prefer crafting terminals just because they're more useful. Um, so that's that particular. Um, oh, we have more terminals. Uh, interface terminal and storage monitor are wanted next, and we're gonna get another storage cell. So let's pick those up. See what it says about them. Crafting terminals allow you to craft stored items. Storage monitors monitor the amount of specific item you have, and an interface terminal lets you remotely access all interface pattern slots in the network. Okay, let's go build some. So the storage monitor. Is a level emitter and one of the panels. Level emitter is a calculation processor with a torch. torch, and 
We also need a calculation processor. your level emitter and then with a the panel we should get a storage monitor. The storage monitor lets you detect how much of various things you have in the network. So I'm going to add that stuff and hook the storage monitor um, right there. So you can see I have 45 cobble, 55 iron. If I right click the storage monitor with the cobble, there's 45 of them in there. There's 55 iron. And what is it? Shift right? Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Unlocked. There we go. So I right clicked with the crescent hammer and now the monitor is locked. So that even if I try right clicking it with another item, doesn't change. Right clicking it with the hammer, crescent hammer again unlocks it. Right clicking it with an empty hand uh, clears it. So that's the storage monitor and now the interface terminal. another panel, an interface, and an engineering processor. So the interface, more formation cores, okay. I'm gonna go build that stuff and uh, be back. Go back. So um, the illuminated panel, the ME interface was, um, well, I'll show it to you. There's the, I think if you shift click the question mark, on the crafting terminal, it will fill in from the inventory, and there is the the M interface. Um, click the X to clear your crafting terminal and return everything to the network. So that's kind of cool. All right, so now we have the interface terminal. Let's see what it can do. I don't have any other interfaces uh, connected right now. Um, Let's build one. Storage bus. Right, we'll need a piston, a sticky piston, and an interface. There's the interface. The piston and sticky piston are uh, relatively easy. And in between episodes, I will probably not only move the ME network to uh, somewhere where it uh, makes more sense, but also um, put a lot of this stuff in it so that in the future it'll just be a matter of, of using the one interface. That's really the reason I like using ME for this uh, stuff at this point. So we've got a piston and a sticky piston. I can't shift click into this one. Actually, I can. Yes, I can. Awesome. All right, so we've got the storage bus now. Let me show you what that will do. So now I've got all these things in this chest. If I hook 
that up. If I can. There we go. So now all these things that are there should show up in here, which is kind of cool. And it still doesn't uh, show in the interface terminal. So what does the interface terminal do? Interface terminal lets you remotely access all interface pattern slots in the network. Okay, so that's probably like a crafting pattern or something from the ME interface. Let's get another one of those. Yeah, so the pattern slots. Uh, we'll, we'll get into patterns when we get into auto crafting. All right, so let's claim that reward. We get another 1K storage cell. We'll load that in the drive. You can see we've already used 13 types. Um, I end up using a lot of these because I, I basically buy, uh, you know, in a couple of episodes, I'll basically be throwing everything into the ME interface, the ME system. Um, actually, with some of the changes between ME or Applied Energy Sticks 1 and 2, I'm going to have to be more careful about channels on my network, but I'll get into that in an episode or two. Uh, Essentia storage and molecular assembly. So I haven't... Uh, Oh, we can digitally store Essentia now. Essentia can be stored in special storage cells. You can keep Essentia monitors to keep an eye on the levels, and a fusion provider can be placed near an infusion altar to provide Essentia from storage reserves instead of awarded jars, which is very cool. Uh, we haven't gotten into Thalmcraft in this series yet, although that might be next, given that I can now uh, play with hooking it into the storage network. But molecular assembly is where I wanted to go. Um, Basically, you can have it auto craft things for you, where you uh, you know you have something that looks like it's an inventory, but it crafts on demand. So it's wanting a molecular assembler. Let's see what that looks like. The molecular assembler is. Oh, I can totally build this, like now. Really, like now. Um, I just need to go get some planks to build the crafting terminal or the crafting station. Let's get some planks. Your assembler is done. Look how it works. Hmm. I don't definitely don't want anything spawning on top of that. Let's uh Okay. Right, so looks like it takes a storage card there, some accelerator cards there and gives you the ability to craft things. Let's see what it can do. Okay, apparently wants a card. Let's just steal that one. Or a storage cell, I mean. Or, no, not a storage cell. So this is where my ignorance is showing. I have not done molecular assembly in AE2. The icon looks like a ah, blank pattern. Got it. All right, let's go get some glowstone. That actually does make more sense for it to be a pattern. Let's 
let's see, I need to synchronize to NEI. There we go. And it probably, I don't know if it wants a blank pattern or an encoded pattern. Nope, wants an encoded pattern. So let's get a pattern encoder. We will need a calculation processor and another illuminated panel. Let's see, for the calculation processor, we need calculation press and the pure quartz along with a silicon That is definitely not what I wanted to put in there. A water tank would not be useful. All right, we've got our calculation processor. Ah, we need another crafting table. So the pattern encoder, network not connected, okay, it does require network connection. There we go. So I should be able to put a blank pattern in and now encode that. I don't seem to have a clear button, which is interesting. So now the molecular assembler has that pattern in it. If I come over here, terminal style, okay, clearly I just haven't learned how to use this yet. So I'm going to do that in between. Actually, let me do it real quick and then close this episode by showing that. Be right back. I'm back. So this is not quite what I was looking for. Um, this is the basic assembly where you can um, basically feed in bits here and it will craft them. You can watch it happen and it will reassemble them right back into the hopper. Um, that's cool and all, but that's not actually what I wanted to do. So uh, I'll set up for next episode to be the auto crafting episode and uh, that'll be cool. So anyway now we have uh, digital storage and I'm excited about it. I don't know if everybody else is but I am. So uh, cool. Hope, uh, hope that you enjoyed that. I certainly did. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. I almost forgot to turn in the quest. So applied engineering. We did finish the molecular assembler quest and we get an ME interface as a result. I'll toss that in there. I'm sure I will use it later. And the last thing left is Essentia storage which needs an Essentia terminal, import bus, export bus, etc, etc. I'm not going to do that one right now. So we've got the applied engineering up to 75% complete and uh, cool. So again, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time. Thanks.